Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zeng here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the online BGC 16 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. We're just going to jump into today's episode, currently with a rating of 1821, so uh, it's the highest we've been in a while, so let's see if we can continue the streak and maybe even reach the 1900s. I do want to address one thing, uh, I saw a bunch of comments yesterday talking about how I was using a more boring team now and how people wanted to see more interesting things, so for those that you know might not be as amused by teams such as this one, I do have to apologize, but like I mentioned, didn't have any time to uh, really get a new team in game just yet, so I'm trying to figure that out for the next couple of days, in the meanwhile I'm going to be using this, but I also want to just remind you of the fact that at the end of the day this channel is meant to educate and for very high quality VGC play um, and you know when you're up as high as the ladder as I am you can only you know sacrifice so much when it comes to uh, using fun and creative stuff for example like the last two teams we featured were both fun and creative and really strong uh, so it does take a while to craft things like that and sometimes there are strategies that are you know interesting and creative that uh, I don't want to use online just quite yet because I'm saving it for potentially nationals and world so just wanted to address that quickly hope you guys understand we're gonna find alan from mexico to kick off the first game of today's episode and as always if you enjoy road to rank please share your support by leaving a like in the video would really appreciate appreciate it and thank you guys for understanding uh hopefully you know it's not a too big of a deal but i uh, appreciate that you guys still watch my content consistently and it means a lot so alan here is gonna have a team of thunderous salamon xerneas groudon weavile and gengar so uh, pretty scary matchup, mainly because of the Weavile. If my opponent didn't have Weavile, I feel, uh, a lot more comfortable. Yesterday, we managed to beat Alex's Weavile, but, you know, that was, uh, a close one at that, for sure. Uh, Bronzong's really good here if we can avoid getting taunted by Gengar and Thunderous and a knockoff from Weavile. So, let's see what I want to lead with. I could go with my own Weavile, honestly. Like, my own Weavile and Bronzong. Um, Smeargle's okay here. I mean, I could go like what I did yesterday, but I really want Bronzong here because uh, both Groudon, like Groudon, Kyogre, Bronzong is a super good core against this team if I can uh, just eliminate that Weavile. So perhaps I'll lead with Weavile here. Weavile, Bronzong, Groudon. Mm, actually, I think I'm going to go Salamence, Bronzong. No, but yeah, tough call. Weavile's a little bit better because of the ice pressure. Because he's got Salamence and Thunderous. So I'm going to lock in and we'll see how this game goes. Uh, it's definitely a really scary team because of Weavile. Weavile's like the one Pokemon that I don't like going up against with this team. And this team already had some Weavile weaknesses. Putting on my we own Weavile didn't exactly help too much. Uh, so we see the Gengar Weavile lead from my opponent, which is a really solid option. Uh, I do have a bunch of plays from the start. I'm thinking... Uh, first question is, I wonder which Pokemon here is has a Focus Sash, because not both of them obviously can. Uh, the goal is to eliminate Weavile, because then Bronzong can take care of his Xerneas, so I'm going to switch out to Groudon immediately here and go for a knockoff onto his Gengar. Alternatively, I could have faked out Weavile, but actually, maybe I should have done that. Yeah, because he's probably going to want to go for an attack, so I could have faked out in like, Gyro Ball. Uh, I didn't think that fully through. We'll see. Uh, although, also the other question is whether Gengar is a Mega Evolution here or not, and if his Weavile has low kick, because that would also be really bad. But, uh, there's a decent chance I don't get anything out of this turn, and that's a little bit frustrating, because I didn't fully think that turn through. So it is Mega Gengar, it's interesting to see. I would guess that Weavile has Focus Sash. Let's see what, whether his Mega Gengar attacks or protects here. Okay, so he does go for Fake Out onto Weavile. Okay, so, I mean, I don't feel that bad, it was still a Speed Tie then. Uh, and he actually does go for Shadow Ball, which isn't exactly the most common move on Gengars. Uh, that is a lot of damage. Doesn't knock me out though, but. Hmm. Uh, so I could protect Groudon. That was a good play by him. I, since he had Shadow Ball, there actually wasn't much I could do. Although I think Bronzong hangs on from that. Um. Yeah, we've all Gengar super strong lead here. Could knock off Precipice Blades or Fire Punch. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to go for here. You might not expect... I mean, he could switch out into... No, he can't have Mens. He's got half Groudon's earned in the back. Except now, both Weavile and Gengar counter my... Okay, he does protect with uh, Gengar, which is a good play. Does he have low kick as well? 
No, he doesn't. He just Ice Skull crashes. I should survive that. As long as he does Oh, he Ice Skull crashes Weavile. Interesting. Huh. Uh, that doesn't knock me out, obviously, and I get a Fire Punch off here, which is nice. And he's sashed. Um. Okay, well, here I think I'm actually going to just press this Blades and faint. Uh, it's a little bit riskier. But it covers the potential switch out, and he can't knock out Groudon. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have let it come down to whether I hit my Precipice Blades or not, though. It's a little bit risky. Let's see. Because, I mean, I, I think Life Orb knock, uh, I mean, uh, Life Orb knock off KO's Gengar, but I'm not entirely sure about that, because I'm a noob. Um, because <laughs> I, I've never used Life Orb Weavile before, I kind of just threw it onto this one, because my Smeargle already had Focus Sash. And I saw some people, like, saying, oh, no, you're using Smeargle, like, oh, why? Um, he actually goes for a feint of his own. Onto Groudon. I don't think that does enough to knock me out with the Shadow Ball. I don't know, that might come close. Yikes. Uh, if I could pick up this knockout, I'd feel really good about my chances of winning the game. He does Shadow Ball, yep. Does he knock me out? No, I hang on with 5 HP. Can I hit this Precipice Blades? Okay, good. So, this is actually super good for me because he's probably got Groudon Zern in the back, and I can just knock off and uh, Precipice Blades, even if he protects and I get the free switching into Kyogre Bronzong, which has a pretty good matchup against Groudon Zern, obviously. Um, so, I'm pretty content with how this game has been played out so far. Yeah. So, if you're my opponent, you're going to have to protect your Groudon, uh, your Xerneas here. I mean, or you could go for an attack. Uh, but you can't Geomancy because if you Geomancy and I get the knockoff, then you just, you know. But I'm not going to overextend on predictions here. His Groudon's probably faster than mine. I'm okay with that. Because once Kyogre and Bronzong come out, then I have Weather Control. Like, I've already won the Weather War here. Uh, so, I just need to play smart. And I, this actually addresses one of the questions. People are, like, saying, why are you using... Uh, Levitate on your Bronzong instead of Heatproof when you have Gravity, and this is the reason, because, uh, you know, Groudon's Compressive Blades when it's against Kyogre Bronzong, that way they can't touch you at all when Rain is up. So now I'm just going to press his Blades here. I'm not going to bother protecting because Kyogre is the more important Pokemon for this matchup in the late game. And he doesn't protect either with Xerneas, which is even better, so I get a knockoff, which probably means Gyro Ball can knock it out now. Let's see if he Geomancies, that would be hilarious. He does go for the Geomancy! <laughs> Um, so that's probably game right there. And I'm faster with Groudon. Wow, that's just terrible news for my opponent. That's like, the worst case scenario. And I double connect. And he eruptions! <laughs> um, I mean, that's actually the better move there, obviously, because you don't want to risk missing Precipice Blades, but I'd rather have him pick up that knockout. So that literally couldn't have played out any better. I was expecting to lose both of my Pokemon and, you know, not get any damage off. Now I just send in Kyogre and, uh, I don't even have to do anything. I mean... I don't think Groudon can even with a critical hit win this game, so I'm just going to Water Spout Trick Room. But, yeah, this played out perfectly. I mean, that's why I bring Bronzong and, I mean, Bronzong Kyogre is such a good option. Uh, when I played against big six teams with this team, a lot of the times, you know, I would actually not bring Groudon and just rely on Brod Bronzong Kyogre to close out the games. And, you know, it's not like they have the best matchup against Groudon Xerneas so if the sun is up, but if you get the rain, the rain up, excuse me, and they can't like, control the weather in any way, shape, or form, then you kind of just dominate. So, uh, I should play it safe here, so I should just protect and trick room. Unless he has rock side in which he could flinch me. Yeah, actually, I might as well just attack here. Because uh, even a critical hit press misplays doesn't knock out uh, my Kyogre. So, if he has rock slide, he needs three consecutive flinches on Kyogre, Bronzong, and Bronzong again. Otherwise, this game is over. And he has eruption, so I doubt he has rock slide, but let's see. Oh, never mind. I mean, oh, yeah, what am I saying? My Kyogre is faster than my Groudon. It's just, you know, it's around the same speed tier, so Water Spot just comes out and wins the game for me. So, I mean, I can respect the Geomancy play there on Xerneas, hoping, like, if I mess up and don't go for a knockoff onto that slot, then, uh, you know, you get the Geomancy up and suddenly you have a pretty good chance of sweeping. So, that's maybe the one play he could have gone for. Um, wasn't expecting my Groudon and Kyogre to be faster, honestly, but I think I had the game one basically locked up when it was two, uh, four versus two. Uh, my Groudon being able to hang on from that Shadow Ball was really clutch, and obviously I had to hit my first Precipice Blades. Uh, the ones against Groudon Xerneas is honestly not that important because Bronze on Kyogre, like I said, counters that pretty well. So, really fun game there, and uh, we are going to pick up a win there, so that's pretty nice. Let's look for our second game now. Uh, just under the 1850s now, so let's see if we can keep up this nice win streak. Uh, 
you know, I mean, that's one of the nice things about this team. It's probably one of the teams I'm more comfortable with, so I can play it at the highest level. Whereas, like, the last couple of teams I was demonstrating, obviously, you guys saw me learning along the way. Not saying you know, I'm perfect with this team, obviously, it's still a lot I'm learning with, but uh, I love the Weavile edition, honestly. I had Mawile over uh, Weavile originally, which was really fun and helped out against Evil Tall teams. Uh, but Weavile, you know, puts on a lot more pressure, especially against Cresselia Bronzong, which, you know, we see a lot of. And one of the few bad matchups that I had when I was using this team was Cresselia with Kyogre's and Groudon's. Uh, just because, you know, they could win the Weather War, because uh, I would skill swap first in their Trick Room, and then they would skill swap, so they get the advantage there, and that was always tricky. But, you know, Weavile with Knockoff does so much damage, like 70-80%, and if you combine that with another attack, like a Salaman's Hyper Voice, or a Scald, or a Fire Punch, then you can pick up the Knockout on Cress, uh, because you get rid of their potential Citrus Berry as well. So, that's why I threw Weavile on, you know, it's just kind of a fun addition. Wanted to try it out, it's been working out pretty nicely so far. And that first game was, uh, I mean, it, it would have completely gone a different way, I think, if he was able to knock out my Grout on there. Um, but I figured, like, I don't think a combination of Faint and Shadow Ball will knock it out, since we saw in the beginning how much Shadow Ball did, but it came really close. Like, uh, maybe too high damage wasn't would have gotten it. We're gonna find uh, Hurley from France with a rating of 18, uh, 1435. That's, like, almost a 400-point differential, so if I lose this, I probably go down to the 1700s again, which is really scary. Especially because Hurley here has a pretty legitimate team. Uh, really interested in the bottom two Pokemon, though, but we've seen uh, Xerneas, Kyogre, Amoongus, Talonflame, Landers, Incarnate Form, and Metagross. So yeah, uh, not much to say here other than pretty interesting team. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. What to lead with? We've all still pretty solid for fake out pressure. Men's Ogre might honestly be the play though. Like Men's Ogre, Bronze on Groudon, because Yvongus is the one scary thing. Um. I don't really care if he Geomancies because I've got Groudon and I've got Bronzong. It feels like I can close out the game with Bronzong pretty Gra Groudon Bronzong pretty easily. Uh, you know, Weavile and Smeargle are nice, but these four Pokemon are my bulkiest Pokemon in terms of and my most offensive, honestly. Like Weavile puts on really fast. I, I mean, I guess Weavile's a little bit more offensive, but it's a really fast kind of pressure, right? It doesn't stick around for the field too often. A Smeargo, on the other hand, is mainly used for support. Uh, you know, unlike a lot of other teams that kind of use Smeargo a lot and lead with it and let RNG rolls uh, try to benefit it, uh, this Smeargo doesn't even have Moody, so it's used for Crafty Shield, which blocks opposing Dark Voids, and so you can lead something like Men's Smeargo against the opposing Smeargo, Crafty Shield, and get a setup. Uh, it allows you also to switch into Bronzong and make some really clever plays, so that's why I really uh, love this Smeargo, and it was, you know, well, one of the first type times we saw it used successfully. Obviously, this was Poke Alex's regionals team that was uh, modified a little bit by me. But uh, we're gonna get into this second game. Let's see what Hurley leads with. I'm gonna lead with Mensa Ogre. Honestly, not my uh, not a common lead uh, with this team, but I feel okay with it. As we see Talonflame and Xerneas here, which I'm perfectly okay with. Uh, to be honest, I think I'm just gonna go straight for a double edge and a water spout here, because Xerneas, of course, wants a Geomancy, but Salamence is faster. You could also Tailwind Protect. Um, that'd be a really solid play, I guess. Oops, sorry about that. That is the phone ringing. Okay, so, sorry about that. Um, it's happening way too much on road terrain. I'm gonna go for a double edge and a water spout here. Uh,. I was gonna say this could be risky if he Moonblast Brave Birds, but I don't even think that knocks out Kyogre because Kyogre's still bulky, Xerneas isn't boosted yet, and Talonflame is intimidated. So Brave Bird probably does like 40%. Uh, I mean, it could be a little bit risky, obviously, because then I would take a lot of damage. He could also be like Scarf Xerneas, which would be bad. And uh, with lower ladder players, you never really know. Let's see. No, he just Tailwinds and doesn't protect with Xerneas, so this could be really ideal if he's Geomancing. <laughs> Let's see, I get my double edge off, this should do 60%-ish, a little bit more, 70, it's a little less invested. He is smart enough and Dazzling Gleams here though, good play. Um, but that's okay with me, I just pick up a double knockout here. So if he Geomancy there, I think the game outright would have been over, <laughs> but uh, I'm still in a pretty good position here. Because I pick up a knockout on Talonflame and Xerneas, and Xerneas is obviously a pretty big threat. Uh, so given that he had Kyogre in the back, and it's going to be Amoongus, Bronzong, or Landorus. Huh, Landorus is actually a little bit scary. Uh, let's think this through. He's got Tailwind up. If I bring in Groudon, he could Earth Power that slot. 
Because he's going to bring in Kyogre for sure. Hmm. Actually, I can just bring out Groudon and Ice Beam to Landry slot and protect. He does have Landry's as his back one, though. Makes me wonder if he's got the Earth Power set. Um, that is a little bit scary. But if I eliminate you know, Landers, then I obviously win Groudon against Kyogre. I should be able to take an Earth Power anyway. So I'm not that concerned. But still a little bit scary. I, obviously, I'm going to be able to win the Weather War here because my Groudon is slower than his Kyogre given that Tailwind is set up and the Weather uh, revolves around speed. But it's pretty cool to see a Landris, obviously. Uh, yo. Oh, we got a DC, actually. That sucks. Hope that's not on my end. I don't think it was on my end. I mean, I feel like I had the game... I mean, it would have come down to do you protect their Landris, and can you pick up a knockout? Because um, I can just Ice Beam that slot twice. So, that's a bummer that we had a DC, but uh, pretty interesting game there. Fortunately, we don't lose a crazy amount of rating points, so that does give me a time to uh, find a third game there. Um, but yeah, Landris is actually one of the few Pokemon I was trying out in the very beginning of the season, because I thought it was a pretty interesting Pokemon. And it's just too frail, honestly. Uh, I did get the top four at US Nationals last year with it, but on that team, like, it made a little bit more sense because you could pick up one-hit KOs on stuff with Earth Power, Hidden Power, Ice, and Stone Edge. Like, Charizard was so common. Uh, you know, we saw Tyranitars, we saw Landrises, and so Landrys and Carnage can outspeed and just pick up one-hit KOs. Can't really do that too much in this format. Even Like, even Earth Powers against Groudons, like, I think Groudons can take that if they're super bulky, which we've seen more of. Uh, Hidden Power Ice isn't that good anymore. I mean, sure, it helps against Salamence, but Salamence outspeeds you. Uh, Stone Edge is... You know, unreliable move. A grass lot and knockoff are interesting options, but um, I think there, all I have to do since the sun is up, his Kyogre can't do anything. I just protect my Groudon, Ice Beam. So we're gonna find Charlie from Mexico uh, for our third opponent of the day. So another three game episode out of that last one, kind of a bummer. Um, but wow, really interesting team. And a scary one at that. Crobat, Kangaskhan, Groudon, uh, Aromatis, Xerneas, and Lilligant. This is super scary. Uh, Aromatis is one of the few Pokemon I was actually very interested in trying out, so kind of cool to see that. Um, so I can't be taunted. I can set up Trick Room. Oh, all six of his Pokemon are such big threats. I don't know what he's going to try to bring. Hmm. To be honest, Weavile Salamence is kind of solid here, because I could get a knockoff immediately. I could fake out Double Edge, you know, Tailwind as well. But I want Bronzong, Kyogre, and Groudon once again. Like that's just such a solid core. We saw how Bronzong, how important Bronzong Kyogre was that first game. Um, but Groudon's super good here too. So perhaps I want to reconsider this and hmm. maybe lead Salamence. Yeah, this time around I like Salamence as a lead a little bit more because of the Intimidate and because of the speed. You know, obviously Weavile's fast as well, but Salamence is a much more bulkier. It can take attacks, although the Fairy-type attacks obviously not too well, but uh, it wouldn't make much sense to bring your Fairy-type Pokemon, but uh, it's not exactly... You know, this is... I don't know the Aromatisse and the Lilligan sets, so that makes this considerably scarier to play up against. So, we do see the Groudon Lilligan coming out. Okay. Um, I think Lilligan relies on fast... Sleep powers and after you, I believe. Remember that correctly? Uh, so the play I want to make the most is to. Hmm. I want to switch out and then Kyogre and Trick Room. Actually, no. Let's just make a better play. <laughs> he could go for an attack on a Bronzong, but I feel like you want to pressure down Salamence. So I can just switch into the Kyogre here. This is still a little bit risky depending on what Lilligan does because we don't know its moveset. Um, but if I switch into Kyogre, then I'm faster now with my Salamence, and then I can Hyper Voice Water Spout. You're forced to switch out. I think that's a pretty good play. Uh, seeing Lilligan Groudon probably confirms Kangaskhan Zern in the back, unless he opted not to bring his Mega Evolution, which would be an interesting decision. But let's see. I'm pretty content with this uh, lead matchup, especially because I get the Intimidate against Groudon as well. We all would have been, yeah, it would have been a little bit worse. So let's see if my opponent predicts my Kyogre switch in here, because I easily could have switched uh, Salamence into Kyogre, which was what I was anticipating. I mean, which was what I wanted to do. But it's like here, even if you connect with the Sleep Powder or whatever you're going for, maybe a Teeter Dance, I still win the Weather War, so that's helpful. Um, but Bronzong does have another DC. Are you serious? <laughs> wow. Uh, I guess my opponent was not very happy about my my switch. Let's see what he did. 
Salamence protects. <laughs> Two DCs, that's unbelievable. He sleep powdered into Ments and Eruption. Yeah, that's why he DC'd. Okay, man. <laughs> Some salty opponents on Battle Spot today. Um, Alright, let's look for another game. So, I mean, technically we've won three times already today, but we've only had one real, real full game. Although I feel like I... like. Both of those games like would have ended up in wins because I outplayed my opponent both times, <laughs> but that's cool. That probably puts us in the 1850s maybe uh, from those two wins that haven't been counted yet. But uh, let's see if we can finally get an opponent. <laughs> I don't know why people are so salty on Battle Spot. Like uh, at least now you know they fixed the issue. Like if you DC, then you lose the game. Whereas back in a couple generations ago, not couple of gen last gen, uh, we had a lot of Wi-Fi tournaments for qualifiers for Worlds. Like. They, they didn't determine a world's invitation. I mean, I they didn't like it wasn't like you win and you get a world's invite, but uh, a lot of the world's invites often, you know, for championship points came down to how well you did on the Wi-Fi tournaments. In 2013, it was really bad when uh, you know you could disconnect and have no penalty, and then in the end they would disqualify people with disconnect rates over a certain percent. So uh, it's kind of a funny throwback there, but yeah, just uh, kind of shocked to see two opponents rage quit so quickly too. Like at least forfeit or just let the game play out. Like. Don't DC after the first turn, man. Um, and I don't know how my opponent wasn't expecting the Kyogre. Like, it was kind of an obvious read, too. That's the thing. But I knew it was like, okay, even if you get the Sleep Powder on Kyogre, I don't really care because I get a free turn of uh, Sleep Burned. And I just Hyper Voice. You're forced to switch out, take a lot of damage. Uh, and you kind of need a double switch out as well. So I guess if you have Kangaskhan Zern in the back from my opponent there and you pull out the double switch after nailing the Sleep Powder and predicting that correctly... That could potentially be bad, because now you can threaten you know, Groudon to come back in. But then I can just switch Kyogre back out into Bronzong. Uh, Double Witch might not even might even knock out your Xerneas. You are forced to fake out it, and maybe Geomancy, but then I can set up Trick Room. Blah, 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 all these hypotheticals. But yeah, let's see if we can uh, find a third opponent. It's only been 22 minutes thus far. No opponents! Wow, that's a bummer. Uh, let's look again. Otherwise, I don't want this to drag on too long. Maybe just call it a day. Uh, uh, yeah, it's kind of funny when you make lower ladder players rage quit against you. So I'll try looking for a game once again. Uh, there really aren't that many people in Mato Spot. So I'm sure people are busy playing in the international challenge as well, which probably explains some of it. But <laughs> kind of funny to catch two DCers rage against you like game after game. I, at first I thought that was my Wi-Fi and I was like, if that's my Wi-Fi dropping when I'm like in the 1840s, I mean, I don't care too much about raiding on Battle Spot, but we are having a pretty nice run right now. Uh, it'd be nice to reach the 1900s, which I don't think we've actually done on Battle Spot this season yet, if I remember correctly. We hit it a couple of times back in 2015, but uh, obviously there haven't been as many episodes of Road to Ranked, and it's been kind of scattered, me just trying out things throughout the couple of seasons, so uh, it would be cool to hit the 1900s. But, let's see. Still so funny, though. <laughs> Some kids were very, very upset. I don't know why, I mean, that, it also obviously could have just been Wi-Fi issues, but... I think I think the Groudon Lilligan guy definitely rage quitted after the uh, the the first turn because you saw he went for the sleep powder and the eruption and like I basically won the game after that turn because I just hyper voice water spout. There's absolutely nothing he can really do. He like is forced to take a double knockout and that's something you always have to consider, right? Like positioning, you have to ask like if my opponent pulls the switch in here, can I be able to recover from it? Uh, so we're gonna find Wahoo from Spain with a rating of 1500. Really not being able to draw in a higher rated opponents and this is uh this episode is just a testament to the quality of battle spot right now but i'm not going to underestimate this guy obviously i'm going to give him the credit he deserves and uh, try to pick up a win because easiest way to lose in this game is getting cocky so mewtwo primate scissor scalipity <laughs> uh scalopede i think that's how you pronounce it zapdos and a uh, blaziken some very strong pokemon I really don't know what to freaking expect, man. I've literally not played against uh, a, a, a freaking Primeape. Almost called it Mankey. It's cute, though. I mean, it's like angry cute. Actually, it's really ugly. <laughs> it's like a very ugly kind of hideous cute. To be honest, I think I'm just going to lead Weavile Kyogre. Uh, Groudon in the back, and... Yeah, I'll still go with Bronzong for a trick from gravity sweep in the end. So it's kind of funny, I was like, yeah, I would need to use really good teams so I can show up the highest quality of games when I go against really quality opponents. But, uh, as you can tell, Battle Spot, like, that's, because there are a lot of higher rated opponents either not playing right now, or they're practicing for US Nationals. Um, you know, Japanese players don't play that much because 
the Jap Japanese season is over over there. So, uh, you see Zapdos and Mewtwo as a lead. I think I'm just gonna fake out Water Spout. Uh, I could Ice Go Crash. Uh, but that's one of the things, someone actually recommended this, and I like that recommendation a lot to put Ice Punch on uh, Weavile. I don't know the rules with uh, Life or Ice Go Crash as opposed to uh, Ice Punch. But, I mean, he could have Thunder on Mewtwo. That'd be scary. But I'm just gonna fake out Water Spout turn one. Even if he side strikes or thunders, Mewtwo survives, or Kyogre survives, I get some chip damage off and then maybe knock off and pick up a knockout. Not either Pokemon. It's Mewtwo X, okay, cool. So I doubt he has Thunder, maybe a fighting type attack. He might be inclined to target down Weavile here though. So I'm gonna get this Ixo Crash off, get some chip damage. More than chip, I mean that was like 25%, that's pretty solid. He's gonna Aura Sphere, <laughs> and he's gonna target down Weavile, so we're just gonna see a Water Spell. Uh, come out and rip a hole through Zapdos and Mewtwo X. Uh, today's more of a fun episode than anything. I thought the last couple of episodes were super competitive, but today we're just finding some interesting teams. Uh, so I do pick up the double knockout there. So I thought that was a relatively risk-free play because at worst your Mewtwo gets a Psystrike Strike or a Thunder off against my Kyogre. If that's the case, you know, that's obviously kind of bad for me. But it's not the end of the world because I get a little bit of chip damage off and that propels my Zapdos or my Weavile to pick up knockouts. And I knew Groudon and Bronzong could uh, close up the game anyway, so we're gonna find Scallopede. It's so pretty, the colors. And Scizor. Oh, I'm so sad I have to dunk on these uh, bug Pokemon. But uh, yeah, let's just Trick Room and Water Spout. This might be a two turn game. <laughs> Man, I thought the three game episode a couple days ago were full of memes as we do see a Mega Horn come out. Maybe a double target onto Kyogre, that'd be cool. Does some good damage there, as it's Life Orb as well, and he's superpowers. Uh, but he doesn't target down the Kyogre, so not doubling up, and since I did Trick Room, I just win next turn. So here's a Water Spot coming out. Jeez, that still does so much damage. <laughs> and a Trick Room. So a three turn game. Uh, battle spot, please. <sighs> okay, well, not much to say here. Uh, just gonna gyro ball and scald, and that's all she wrote. GG's. At least the first game was. Wait, what even happened in the first game? Dude, I'm getting old. I have a short term memory loss. <laughs> My memory is either super good or super awful, and I, I, I literally cannot remember what we played against the first game. Uh, it was a big six. Oh, there was a there was a Groudon and a Xerneas. Oh yes, we've all Gengar Groudon Xerneas. My memory is fading me, my friends. Forgive me. Uh, Scald comes out, picks up the knockout onto Scizor, and eh, that's gonna be GG. GG 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 GG. Okay, so somehow we managed to fit in four games today. <laughs> Three of them being not the most competitive, but I mean I don't know. I think it still helps to see like top players go up against these kind of teams because it shows like. Hmm, what's the most consistent way I can get the guaranteed win against teams that I should be winning against? Because you still have to watch out for all the surprises, and they often can catch you off guard. We haven't had that happen just yet, but it's been scary. <laughs> Definitely been scary. But yeah, I think that's going to conclude it for this episode. I am curious, are we in the 1850s yet? Wow, even with those three wins, we don't get into the 1850s. But 1848, I'll take that, that's not bad. So uh, yeah, maybe we can push until the 1900s actually in the next couple of days. But that is going to conclude this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This one was a little bit more of shenanigans from my opponents than anything else. But uh, there were some bad boys and girls. Uh, that's going to be it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. As always, leave a like if you did. And I'll see you guys next time. Alright, peace.